dick and you can kiss my ass. Hey guys, welcome back. Thanks for watching. I'm here with Clint Smith, the legend. Um, we, <laughs> we just got done with... This ammo man, he's the legend. <laughs> we just got done with Combat Shotgun right. here at your Texas facility. I wanted to say thank you to you and Heidi for all your hospitality, your awesome staff. Um, the, the old saying, you don't know what you don't know, yeah. right? So that came into effect. Man, you guys taught me so much in two days. Uh, thank you, sir. I really appreciate that. No problem. It's, uh, you know, the shotgun's a, a good tool, but it is a tool. So a lot of people, you know, we try to get, like, when we talk, you know, and we've talked, uh, is to get people to understand that, like all tools, it has limitations or has assets or liabilities, understanding how the gun works. So that's kind of working on, you already know the big caveat with shotgun is to load the gun. Yeah. You know, because they don't hold very much ammo. They're like a revolver. I mean, you know, in a matter of that they're not high cap, like a Glock or a Beretta or something, you know, they're, they're uh, you know, uh, guns that are, I have a limited ammunition, so you gotta like learn, really learn the ammunition management. That was something that was that was stood out to me in, in such a drastic manner was the the different ways to do it, right? right? The right way to do it, which you you, you or, or, or the, out what comes out with the best result. Yeah, you know exactly. I mean? And then how often you do it. Sure. You know, um, like, to we keep hope, the gun up. Right? Yeah, yeah. We hope not to be in any fight, but if, sure. if we find ourselves in a long one and we have a, a, a shotgun. You got to feed it, you sure. know. And, and the deal with it is, always remember that you and I are both interested in the same thing. I'm not interested in shooting somebody. That's just a lot of paperwork. I also don't want to be food for somebody else as if something goes south. So we're trying to learn skills that we hopefully don't use. It's kind of bizarre. Like I used to teach a lot of police counter sniper, and the ultimate goal is to not shoot anybody. But if you have to do this, it need to be very good and responsible. So things that you know and remember without stepping on your toes, uh, you know, shotguns inside a house or a rifle, the pattern are very small so we need to get people to sh pattern their gun um, look at the advantages of like the ammunition like uh, so I said right Fioke that's right, right? okay that's right okay <laughs> the uh, the nickel plated pellets were awesome you know we did like great stuff with that and people go oh, that's a commercial it's not a commercial it's a truth and you'll find that out if you try to shoot lead because the pellets are often damaged in the barrel and then you get errant pellets and, you know? and lead pellets can actually even just be be damaged by ignition. Sure, the just push, the impact the, to get yeah, smashed. Push. Well, you think about it, I don't know what the muzzle velocity is, so to speak, but if you're parked and all of a sudden I go from that to 2,000 feet per second, that's a pretty big kick in the butt. Yeah, shit's that's gonna a, break. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Break up. yeah. <laughs> so, um, one, going to that point really quick, uh, one demo that you did without giving away a curriculum, you, you put uh, a rope yeah. up and you had the patterns. Yeah. patterns on that, that was so... Yeah. It's a it's a training aid, and so what it amounts to is, it's we'll say it's a 30-foot piece of parachute cord. On it at three yards, I have a piece of cardboard that's one inch around, the diameter of the bore, and then, you know, it's at, at five yards away, you know, there's like a five-inch circle. As a general guideline, now without getting hysterical, with stuff especially like buckshot, we'll generally shoot at five yards, inside five inches, give or take a little bit. So we had, we had this little thing, this is just, so like this would be the end of the deal. So this is about 10 yards away. So it's a nominal 10 inch circle. Duly noted, there'll be whole, there's pellets. I mean, it, it, it's a training aid, it's a tool. And it would be the best training aid I could make if it was slightly elongated so that people would get the idea that the pattern, there's actually a pellet that gets there first. Yeah. And then there's one that gets there later. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, and it's just uh, the different sizes. And all it was intended to do was to give people a visual aid of what this funnel of pellets are doing as they go down range. So it's a pretty good, I always tell people, the muzzle is like the mouthpiece of a trumpet. And the farther you go down the trumpet, the more the trumpet flares. Yep, so that, that's, that's a great trumpet. analogy. And, and th that was something that really stood out to me as something that, oh, that makes sense. And it breaks the myth of, oh, I, all I gotta do is point it down the hallway and, right. and I don't even have to aim this thing. I reiterate, okay, you need to pattern the guns and you need to understand that like across a room like we're in now, if I shot the gun, everything I shot would stay inside a light switch. Yeah. The patterns are small, the gun needs to be aimed. It's not like, you know, the Wyatt Earp, it's gonna, my favorite movie is El Dorado with Jimmy Conn and John Wayne, okay, where they shoots the gun and shit, everything like for 40 yards gets a pellet in it. Yeah. This, he this, had Hurricane like, Katrina loaded sure, in that right? Yeah, 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 I mean, yeah, it looked like a tornado <laughs> coming out. Got the whole town. So uh, when we get back to the pattern, you know, if we're at three yards, the pattern will be slightly larger with birdshot just because there's more going down there and generally it'll be three inches or under and so on and it's a general guideline from zero to about 15 yards uh, and you already know zero to ten yards a gun definitely a rifle inside the house as far as the pattern not opening uh, 
you know, 10 to 30 yards, the gun is starting to get its optimum performance because the pattern is starting to give us something where we can have a minor, minor margin of error. In other words, he may get hit by four pellets, okay, instead of all nine if the guy was like running. And so that's kind of what, you know, we're thinking about. And that's like the uh, ideal distance where a shotgun may have an advantage over a rifle because you're taking advantage of that right. pattern. Moving and stuff uh. like that. And, you know, always the deal with it is, is we all know that if you took a two, two, three round, you know, like here, that's a hole or actually, you know, pistols put holes in people, rifles put holes through people in a shotgun, right range, right load, will take a piece of meat off and chunk it on the floor. Okay, so if you're, you know, you get hit with one round, that's one thing, but now if I take nine pellets, so I'm getting nine 30 caliber holes, you know, uh, yeah, a lot of trauma. Yeah, that you know, changes your day. A, yeah, it's a fight changer. Yeah. And that's what you're looking for. And I always anticipate that what I shoot is not going to work. So in a shotgun, if the range was something questionable, like we'll say the guy's 35 yards away and he's moving through thick brush, I like shoot, okay, and then I'd shoot another round to overlay the patterns, okay? So what I'm trying to do is fill in the void of where this guy is so that I can put something on him. Like right? a dense cloud. Sure, so I got a pattern and I got it followed by another pattern. And you know by shooting it that no matter who builds the ammunition without being disrespectful, yeah. no matter who builds the ammunition, these things are gonna do different things in different guns at different oh, ranges. Oh, for sure. Hence why we patterned the guns so we get some idea about input on that, okay? So I got an idea. Okay. Fantastic. Um, one thing that, that you said in the class that resonated with me and it's something that I've always believed and I want to get mm -hmm. kind of put it out there a little bit is that we're doing this for the next generation. Absolutely. Like, you know, I, and I got it. You know, uh, I'll be 69 pretty soon. Some people think that's old. I don't really agree with that. You know, my knee may not work so well or something like that, but you know, I'll find a 69 year old car and see how that's working. Okay. So, but the deal with it is, is you and I, you know, you said to me that you were on the edge, the North end of the millennial thing. Yeah. And so we know that these people in this generation, no disrespect intended or implied, but a lot, not all people, some people in this millennial generation are not kind of volunteers or kind of contributors or they really don't want to participate in anything or I don't need a gun you know the government should protect me that's all really good but always remember the presence of the firearm in your home owned safely by responsible people and that means that I would teach my children and I would teach my children well enough that they would teach their children the deal with it is this personal responsibility and always remember that you and I, the gift that we have of gun ownership, and I got all the crazy shit and people shooting stuff, and, I, and that's a bad thing. But, you know, a lot of people were killed in car accidents by drunks, too. And, you know, well, you got, and we get into, you, have a, you know, all the crazy shit. Mm -hmm. My point is, you and I will never be subjected to the whims of other people without our permission. Correct. And I want to teach the next generation that that's a possibility and actually a gift, you know, the... Firearms, and it, you know, people go, oh, you love guns. No, I don't, they're, 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 it's a mechanical device. But I think they should hold a place of honor in America because, you know, we, you, you people go, oh, this is a screwed up country. You know what, if it's so terrible, why don't you move to one of these places that you think is so great? Uh, you know, uh, Australia don't have guns, and they have a really high crime rate because they took all the guns away from people, okay? Yeah, and, and it's documented. I mean, you know, it's like, oh, well, you don't, um, you can't legislate morality. You can't legislate mentality like someone being crazy, you know? Um, and so there's this argument about this. Personally, I don't get in it between me and you. Yeah. What I do is my job is to teach people to be the most responsible person they can be with a firearm. And I don't want them to shoot people. I don't. The school's not about shooting people. The school is about making people smart. So in the last two days, my job, even though I go, we're here to fight, we're here to fight, shoot them in the nuts, shoot them in the guts, all that stuff. You got the hoorah stuff. I also, okay, told you that the ultimate goal for us is to not shoot anyone. And That's never it. be in the fight. No, never be in a fight. So, um, not to no, interrupt not you, um, one thing that I've taken from this training journey that I've been on is the more I train, the better I am at avoiding shit. I agree. Like the less bullshit I get into in my life. And I actually had a friend tell me once uh, recently, he's like, I don't think I, I want to carry uh, a gun every day because I'll get in trouble. And I go, actually, it's the exact opposite. Once right. you start taking this on, it's a, it's a big responsibility and you start to understand that and, and once you get professional training you start to really realize that and you get better tactics and what and what I mean by that is you 
you avoid shitty situations sure. more because you're more aware. You learn from people like him, bad shit can't happen. Well, and you remember this, this is always the way to look at it. Personal awareness, like where the hell are you? What are you doing? Why am I here? Somebody's in the parking lot shooting, you know, I'm driving through a bad part of town. You know, like uh, I hear a crash at the back of the house. Personal awareness and or slash the lack of it will force you to use personal tactics that you may or may not have. So if I see a bad situation or every one of you have had someone do that to you like in a car, man, I'm not gonna stop my car with my no. wife and kids in a car over something like that, drive on, you know what I mean? And you already know that if somebody insists on doing this and, and then there we get into the part where I don't wanna be drug out of my car and be with a tire arm. Um, so I would use what I had to do to defend myself and I, you know, there, there's the other thing that we need to talk about just briefly. For some reason, it's gotten to the point that we need to be ashamed of owning guns. I, I, where did that come from? I don't need to be ashamed of that. You know, most of the people watching this never broke the law. You know, you got a speeding ticket once or something, but we're not, you know, I'm, this thing is not going, you know, into the death row at Alcatraz kind of thing. You know? So, um, being from Las Vegas, right, we have SHOT Show there right, right. over here. Yeah. All the people that I know that I used to work in the service industry with, they always tell me SHOT Show is their favorite time of year because it's the nicest people. Right. Yes ma'am, no ma'am, good they zippers, they, yeah. Yeah, they take care of other people and that's, you know, that's I think that's what you're getting at is sure. that we don't have anything to be ashamed of as a right. culture because we have right on our side. We generally try and do the right thing. Yeah, like you said, uh, you know, you, like all things you can run into somebody that's not what we'd like to be associated with, but at the same time, you know, the the, the deal with it is, is you know, people are responsible. Uh, and I personally think carrying a gun is going to keep me out of trouble more than it's going to get me in trouble. I already know that if I shoot someone, my trouble doesn't end, it begins. Yeah. And you know, now I got to get a lawyer and all that. So that's the same thing that we try to express to you. I, I want you to avoid these things if you can. Yeah. And remember, this is all about, for me, at my age, it's about the future. This guy's got a hot wife, okay, she's a great gal, okay, and so like, you know, we have the pirate show just for her, <laughs> okay, and so on, but uh, joking aside, um, this is about like the next generation of people and then setting up for the future. And, and so it's a foundation, you know, I like to think that I'm building a foundation or helping to build that foundation for people like yourselves. So, you know, that you're in a good spot. I mean, you got ammo, you know, you can influence what's going on industry wise. And I think that's important. We should not want to be ashamed of owning guns. And the second thing is you shouldn't be ashamed of defending yourself. I, I, that, that's not, not the way it is, man. You know, if you go back 10,000 years, you know, uh, I hate to say this, but it's true. More things have been solved by violence than they have by diplomacy. And so the deal with this, I don't want to do or be involved in a violent act. Uh, but I also don't want to be subjected to robbery, rape, pillage, and plunder, you know? So. Yeah, and it all comes back, like you said, against your will. Right. Like if something is happening against your will, you... I should be able to defend myself. And in today's world, in our society, we all know that that means we're going to get a lawyer. Yeah. yeah and all those kind of things. So, yeah, I, you know, I tell people hey, every year at the SHOT Show, someone tugs on my shirt, Mr. Smith, if you had two minutes, you know, what gun would you get? And I go, I wouldn't get a gun. I would drive my car through the garage door. I'd be about a mile down the road before the fight starts. And the price of fixing the garage door and my truck and all that other stuff will be at less than by a lawyer. So my best weapon is the space between my ears and avoidance. So, so you see shit, it's like when we get our age, remember when we were kids, you had to eat food you didn't like. Yeah. Okay? yeah. So I don't have to do that. We're adults now. I don't have to do stuff I don't like. Uh, I don't have to be like punched in the face or shot or stabbed. Uh, I don't have to eat spinach if I don't like it. You know what I'm saying? So it's that kind of thing. Right. So the space between your ears, if if you guys want to upgrade the spaces in between your ears from this guy right here and his excellent staff, go to thunderranch.com. I think that's correct. Yeah. That's right. And then on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube, it's all Thunder Ranch. You guys got to get on there and learn from this guy. I can't say how much I've taken away from it just in two days. Um, once again, thank you so much, Clint. Yeah, no problem. Um, thank you, Heidi. Thank you to the whole staff. You guys are awesome. Um, at Thunder Ranch, go give them a follow, like, all that good stuff. You guys know where to find me. Stay safe out there, and I'll talk to you next thank time. Thank you. Awesome, man. Thank you so much. Yeah, no problem. That was awesome.